Daenerys. For an instant, she glimpsed Khal Drogo before her, mounted on his smoky stallion, a flaming lash in his hand. He smiled, at the whip snake down at the pyre, hissing. She heard a crack, the sound of shattering stone. The platform of wood and brush and grass began to shift and collapse in upon itself. Bits of burning wood slid down at her, and Danny was showered with ash and cinders. And something else came crashing down, bouncing and rolling, to land at her feet. A chunk of curved rock, pale and veined with gold, broken and smoking. The roaring filled the world. Yet dimly through the firefall, Danny heard women shriek and children cry out in wonder. Only death can pay for life. And there came a second crack, loud and sharp as thunder. And the smoke stirred and rolled around her and the pyre shifted. The logs exploding as the fire touched their secret hearts. She heard the screams of frightened horses, and the voices of the Lothraki raised in shouts of fear and terror, and Sajora calling her name and cursing. But no, she wanted to shout to him, No, my good knight, do not fear for me. The fire is mine. I am the Daenerys Stormborn, daughter of dragons, bride of dragons, mother of dragons. Don't you see? Don't you see? With a belch of flame and smoke that reached thirty feet into the sky, the pyre collapsed and came down around her. Unafraid, Danny stepped forward into the firestorm, calling to her children. The third crack was as loud and sharp as the breaking of the world. When the fire died at last and the ground became cool enough to walk upon, Sajora Mormon found her amidst the ashes, surrounded by blackened locks and bits of glowing ember and the burnt bones of men and woman and stallion. She was naked, covered with soot, her clothes turned to ash, her beautiful hair all crisped away. Yet she was unhurt. The cream and gold dragon was suckling at her left breast, the green and bronze at her right. Her arms cradled them close. The black and scarlet beast was draped across her shoulders, its long sinuous neck cold under her chin. When it saw Jora, it raised its head and looked at him with eyes as red as coals. Wordless, the knight fell to his knees. The man of her caste came up behind him. Jogo was the first to lay his arak at her feet. Blood of my blood, he murmured, pushing his face to the smoking earth. Blood of my blood, she heard Ago echo. Blood of my blood, Rakaro shouted. And after them came her handmaids, and then the others, all the Thraki, men and women and children. And then he had only to look at their eyes to know that they were hers now, today and tomorrow and forever. Hers as they had never been Drogo's. As Daenerys Targaryen rose to her feet, her black hissed, pale smoke venting from its mouth and nostrils. The other two pulled away from her breasts and added their voices to the call, translucent wings unfolding and stirring the air. And for the first time in hundreds of years, the night came alive with the music of dragons. The end.